What's up, my comic comrades? Today we're breaking down the comic book history of The Walking Dead's main protagonist, Rick Grimes. Robert Kirkman's The Walking Dead comic series is by far one of the most successful creator-owned comics of all time, if not the most successful. We're talking about a title that ran for 193 issues over almost 16 years and spawned numerous other media properties. And among the many cool and popular characters who appeared in The Walking Dead comic, there is no doubt that Rick Grimes is the man in that universe, and today, we're gonna find out why. We also wanna thank The Walking Dead Survivors for sponsoring this episode. The Walking Dead Survivors is a dope ultimate survival strategy game licensed by The Walking Dead creator Robert Kirkman's Skybound Entertainment, where you dive into the post-apocalyptic world of The Walking Dead and see if you have what it takes to lead other survivors in battle against never-ending roaming hordes of the undead and crazy villains like the governor and Negan. You'll rebuild from the rubble, gather a team of fighters, form a strategy, and defend your community against the onslaught of walker attacks using various weapons, defense towers, traps, and other structures. Along the way, you'll also cross paths with iconic heroes from The Walking Dead like Michonne and Glenn as you scour the radio waves looking for other survivors. Oh, and did I mention you get to kill zombies? Come on, who doesn't like killing zombies? But like I said, you will have to fight the living and the dead because our boy Rick Grimes has been taken prisoner by the governor so you'll need to gather your fighters to break them out. And just when you think you're out of Woodbury, you come face to face with the brutal saviors who will threaten everything you've built. It's bloody nerve wracking and a crap ton of fun. Along with the primary goal of the game, you could also form a clan, battle other players in the duels arena, take on survival challenges, and a bunch of other cool features. So put your humanity and your survival skills to the test. Click our link in the description below to download and play The Walking Dead Survivors for free. But now, my friends, it's time to dive into the comic book history of the sheriff himself, Rick Grimes. Rick Grimes first appeared in issue one of the Walking Dead comic series in 2003. He was created by Robert Kirkman and Tony Moore. A little fun fact about Rick is that in the comic book series, he has the most appearances out of any other character. And that is likely because as the everyman character, Rick is by far the most relatable and likable character in the series. So he's presented in a way that the average person can relate to, from his moral codes to his values. He's a guy who always wants to help people, but at the same time, he's gonna put his family and friends first. I know Rick is the character I relate to most in The Walking Dead. I mean, I'm a husband and a father myself. And while I would wanna help others in a zombie apocalypse, let's just say I might be a little cautious doing so. You know, so my wife and kids don't end up as snacks for the undead? Just a little worry I would have. Anyway, with that pleasant nugget now bouncing around in your brain, let's dig into Rick Grimes' fictional origin to see how this Southern police officer became arguably the best leader in The Walking Dead. Rick Grimes grew up in Cynthiana, Kentucky. As he got older, he went to college and got a degree in order to become a police officer. It was during his college years, however, that he would meet a high school senior named Lori at a party. But despite their chemistry, they couldn't pursue a relationship because she would soon move away to college. Or so they thought, because as fate would have it, Lori ended up dropping out during her first year and returned to Cynthiana, at which point Rick and Lori became an item. They got married soon after and Rick joined the police force along with his best friend Shane. Sometime after this, Lori gave birth to their first child, Carl. But while things started out great for their life together, those good times definitely would not last. A few years later, just before the zombie apocalypse, Rick and his best friend Shane found themselves in a shootout against someone who escaped from prison. During the confrontation, Rick was shot by the convict and hospitalized in a coma. But when he eventually woke up, he found himself alone in a hospital bed surrounded by nothing but eerie silence. Rick quickly realizes that the hospital is abandoned and he's the only one there. So he puts on his clothes and starts walking around to see if he could find doctors, nurses, or anyone for that matter. As he starts looking around, he's greeted by several zombies who were locked in the cafeteria. Needless to say, Rick freaks out and is attacked by the walkers, but is able to escape. While making his way home on foot, he sees a zombie bicyclist on the ground and gasps and cries in horror. Former people, now zombies, quickly become known as walkers. Anyway, after he gets his bearings, he takes the woman's bike and rides back to his house where he finds it's abandoned and ransacked. While looking outside his house, Rick is hit on the back of the head with a shovel by a kid named Dwayne, the son of Morgan. After which, Morgan takes Rick inside of his house until he comes to, then gives him a meal while apologizing for his son's actions as his son thought Rick was a walker. Morgan goes on to explain to Rick what happened to the world while he was in a coma. Rick then figures that Lori might have gone to her parents' house who lived five hours away in Atlanta. So he comes up with a plan to go there, but not before thanking Morgan and stocking up with some guns and ammo at the police station. Once he's geared up, Rick takes a police 
police car and begins driving to Atlanta. But the car soon runs out of gas, so he's forced to jump on a horse he finds nearby to go the rest of the way. When he eventually arrives in the city, he quickly finds out that the entire city is overrun with walkers when a massive horde of them attack and start eating his horse. The freaked out horse throws him off, but Rick manages to escape with the help of a young kid named Glenn who is out on a recon mission looking for food and other supplies. After Glenn helps Rick escape, he takes him to a camp of survivors where Rick is surprised to find his wife and son are alive and well. He also learns that Shane is with them and has been looking out for his family in Rick's absence. It's an epic origin and an amazing start to the series. Anyway, now that you know how Rick got started in the Walking Dead comic universe, as well as a bit of his early life, let's take a look at some story arcs. The Walking Dead's first storyline is what obviously sets up the entire series, and is the one that starts off with Rick waking up in a coma in the hospital like we just went over in Origins. Well, once Rick reunites with his family, tensions between him and Shane start to build over leadership of the group, but also over where Lori's affections lie. Because Shane was the one who was there for Rick's wife and his son when Rick was thought to be dead. Eventually, a confrontation between Rick and Shane gets so heated in The Walking Dead issue 6 that Shane points a gun at Rick saying, everything was so perfect until you came back. At which point Rick says, damn it Shane, stop this. Shane refuses and tells Rick, this is the only way. This is what has to happen. You weren't meant to come back. You weren't meant to live. Rick pleads with him saying, please Shane, don't do this. But as Shane is about to pull the trigger, he gets shot in the neck by Carl who says, don't hurt my daddy again. Carl then runs into his father's arm saying, it's not the same as killing the dead ones, daddy. And Rick responds by telling Carl, it never should be, son. It never should be. It's pretty gnarly, but so, so good. After this, Rick leads the group away from Atlanta in search for somewhere safer to stay. And along the way, Lori tells Rick that she's pregnant and it may be Shane's baby, but Rick being the good guy that he is says, he plans to take care of the baby either way. A short time later, Carl's accidentally shot in the back by a man named Otis. And wanting to make up for his mistake, Otis escorts Rick and gang to the farm of Herschel Green. We learn that Herschel has experience working with animals and had even removed a bullet from someone's foot once, so he agrees to try to help Carl. Thankfully, he's able to save Carl's life, but ultimately tells Rick that he and his people need to move on and move out. And I would say Herschel made his point quite clear by telling Rick, at gunpoint. So as you tend to do when someone's pointing a gun at you, Rick listened and took the rest of his group back on the road. It wouldn't be too long, however, before two survivors in Rick's group spotted a prison. He tells them, look at that fence. Look how big this place is. It could be made safe. We'll have to clean it up, but it's perfect. We're home. And this, my friends, leads us to the prison arc. The prison arc is by far one of my favorite arcs of the entire Walking Dead comic series. This is obviously where Rick, Lori, Carl, Glenn, Dale, Tyrese, and the rest of the survivors in Rick's group would live for quite Quite some time. Shortly after acquiring the prison, Rick and Dale thought it would be best to have as many people as possible live there together. They were even able to convince Herschel and his family to leave their farm and come live with them at the prison, as the farm was becoming less and less safe by the day. Also during this arc, Tyrese's daughter, Julie, would commit suicide, but come back as a roamer, which is where the group realized for the first time that everyone is infected with this mysterious virus. Whether you were bitten by a roamer or not, Rick would even commit his first murder during this time. Killing walkers doesn't count because they're already dead. Anyway, he killed an inmate at the prison named Dexter, who let's just say, was acting a fool. Rick being a good guy wouldn't have killed him otherwise. It's also during the prison arc, in issue 19 to be exact, where the katana wielding Michonne would make her first appearance. And shortly after Michonne made her debut, a few members of the group would discover the town of Woodbury while in search for a helicopter that crashed. And finding Woodbury can only mean one thing, the introduction of the governor, a psychopath who leads Woodbury with extreme ruthlessness and manipulation. A man who proves to be a major villain and nemesis for Rick in this story arc. In fact, the governor goes on to torture both Glenn and Michonne when Rick decides he's not going to give up the location of their prison. But Michonne is able to break free and she gets her revenge on the governor, torturing the crap out of him in The Walking Dead issue 33. Look, I'm talking about she uses a power drill to drill into the dude's shoulder pliers to rip his fingernails off before ultimately using her katana to chop his right arm off while telling him, don't worry, I can stop the bleeding. She then proceeds to use a blowtorch to cauterize the wound. Now you're thinking to yourself, that's rough, a situation I would never want to be in. But guess what? She doesn't stop there. Nope. She then grabs a spoon and scoops out his left eyeball. That's right. She scooped out his eyeball like she was making a fruit salad with watermelon. 
Freaking gross. Anyway, towards the end of the prison arc, Lori gives birth to her baby, which they named Judith. But that brief moment of happiness doesn't last long, as the now mutilated but recovered governor finds the prison along with his best fighters and declares war against Rick and his group. There is an intense battle, and in the end, Rick defeats the governor, but not before many people are killed, including Tyrese, Rick's wife Lori, and Judith, their newborn baby. This leaves Rick dealing with overwhelming loss and having hallucinations of his wife. Jumping forward in time, we are introduced to another group of survivors who are on a mission to Washington, which consists of Abraham, the leader, Abraham's girlfriend Rosita, and Eugene, the guy who claims to have the knowledge for the cure and is requesting to go to Washington, D.C. We also get introduced to a group called the Hunters, who just so happen to be cannibals, which is where we get that infamous tainted meat line. This happens after the Hunters chopped off and ate Dale's leg. They realized he had been bitten by a walker and they were eating tainted meat. This is also where we're introduced to the preacher, Gabriel Stokes. This would be considered the post-prison arc before we lead into the next big arc, the Alexandria arc. Alexandria is like a safe zone, a safe town, if you will, where Rick and his fellow survivors stay for some time. Rick even becomes a constable in the safe zone of Alexandria. And it's a little bit after this we would be introduced to the infamous Negan, who is probably the most famous Walking Dead villain of them all. Negan and his army would eventually take all of Alexandria's supplies and demand the group to continue to supply the saviors with offerings to prevent more bloodshed. It gets much, much worse, but Negan is ultimately responsible for one of the most brutal killings in the entire series, when he beat Glenn to death over the head with his baseball bat Lucille, literally causing his head to cave in as if someone took a sledgehammer to a watermelon. Obviously, there were some other big moments in the Walking Dead franchise like Carl losing his eye, Rick losing his hand, Carol's death, the introduction of the Whispers, and Rick finally defeating Negan. Which he does with a knife, by the way, but we'll get more into Rick's weapons and arsenal in Powers and Abilities. Anyway, the point is, there's a lot of huge moments and storylines and sub-storylines in the Walking Dead series. Even if you're just talking about ones involving Rick, but I'm gonna skip all the way to where the Walking Dead ended with the Commonwealth storyline. At this point, what's left of Rick's group has found refuge in the Commonwealth, an organized human community tyrannically governed by Pamela Milton. Once there, Rick's intentions are to keep all the people safe that are inside, which places him at odds with Milton, but clearly puts him in the graces of the community as they start to respect him. Eventually, a revolt almost erupts, but Rick quickly tames it by giving an inspirational speech speech. Because if history teaches us anything, it's that a good speech can change the tide of a war. Anyway, after this, Pamela is arrested, but Rick orders her to be released to send a message of peace. However, because there's always a big twist in comic books, a short time later, Rick is shot and murdered in his own bed alone by Pamela's son, Sebastian, who resents Rick because he basically came in there and took over his mother's job. That's right, Rick is killed in issue 192, the second to last issue of The Walking Dead. Anyway, a little after this, Carl goes into his father's room to check on him, and when he opens the door, Door, he sees his father has now been reanimated as a walker. When zombie Rick sees his son, he starts walking towards him to feast on his flesh, forcing Carl to kill his own dead father. Talk about rough. Rick Grimes' story comes to a tragic end, with his son Carl being the one forced to put his dad down for good. But there you have it, friends, a brief summary of Rick Grimes throughout the Walking Dead comic. From the first issue when he woke up in the hospital bed all the way to his death, in the second to last issue of the series. Obviously, there's a lot we didn't elaborate on as there's nearly 200 issues of The Walking Dead, but this gives you a nice little overview of the character's history, so uh, cut us a little slack. With that said, let's move on to powers and abilities. As we all know, The Walking Dead is about normal human beings who are trying to survive in a world where a virus broke out turning people into zombies. Because of this, there is no superheroes or metahumans in the Walking Dead universe, meaning Rick doesn't have any powers. He's just a normal dude, a cop from Kentucky. But even though he doesn't have any superpowers, he is skilled in several areas. First and foremost, he's a fantastic leader. The best leader out of the entire Walking Dead franchise, but as far as physical abilities go, he's extremely proficient with melee weapons, as one has to be to survive in this world. Rick has used an array of weapons over the course of the Walking Dead comic series to put biters down, including his pistols, knives, axes, and of course, his iconic hatchet. He's seen quite a bit throughout his comic book run, hacking away at both walkers and his living enemies with that hatchet. He of course also wields several types of firearms throughout the stories as well. And as a former cop, he is trained in both hand-to-hand -hand combat and the proficient use of firearms. And as a matter of fact, just like in the comics, you'll see Rick Grimes wielding these same weapons and skills in the Walking Dead Survivors game we introduced you to in the open. He destroys walkers with his hatchet, his handgun, his rifle, and more. But he's not alone. There's actually more than 80 characters from the Walking Dead comics in the game who battle alongside Rick in the Horde of 
Walker's gameplay, and more. But there's also brand new original characters who play central roles in the game's story. Like Maya, a fearless crack shot from the defense tower who wields more handguns than a sheriff in the Old West. But she also carries a handy crowbar as backup for when things get a little too close. Then there's Vane, a difficult and opinionated former con man whose checkered past makes him a tough melee fighter, a highly accurate shooter, and handy with his tools. He's actually the lead builder when you start the game. There are several more new characters, but you'll have to dive into the Walking Dead survivors for yourself to see who they are and check out their skills and weapons of choice. As for Rick Grimes altogether, it's his combination of gritty determination, street smarts, leadership characteristics, and survival slash law enforcement training that makes Rick a formidable force in the zombie apocalypse. But with that said, it's now time for some reading recommendations. Obviously, to get Rick Grimes' full story, you'll need to read the entirety of the Walking Dead comic series, which you can of course do, as it's collected in several volumes. However, issues 1 through 6 give you the epic origin of the story and Rick's tragic conflict with his best friend Shane. Issues 27 through 48 give you the Woodbury slash War Against the Governor story, and issues 97 through 108 introduce the Saviors, their brutal leader Negan, and their gruesome war against them. That should be enough to get you all started. But before we go, we want to thank the Walking Dead survivors for sponsoring today's episode. Be sure to click our link in the description to download and play the game for free. It's a seriously fun dive into the world of The Walking Dead, so be sure to check it out. And that's going to bring another episode of Variant to a close, but if you like today's video, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, subscribe, like, and comment. It helps the channel grow. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.